Okay. So this uh, is the Planning Commission meeting for the City of Riverbank, Tuesday, June 21. Uh, this meeting will be held in accordance with California Government Code Section 59453, Subdivision E of the Ralph M. Brown Act, California GC 549950, uh, the Federal uh, Americans with Disabilities Act and recent Stanislaus County Health Officers mandate uh, face covering. Uh, while this meeting will be physically open to the public, given state and emergency regard to threat of COVID, members of the public may also participate mm -hmm. via Zoom virtual platform. Uh, refer to the last page of the agenda for participation. Uh, call to order. Jen? Okay, roll call. Um, Chair Steve Link. Here. Vice Chair Natasha Basso. Here. Commissioner John Dynan. Here. Commissioner John Stewart. Here. And Commissioner Ben Rubin. Yes. Okay. okay so the, the first item is, is for uh, mention of any Planning Commission uh, member or staff that has a direct conflict of interest with any of the scheduled items this evening, um, which I do uh, for the, uh, the item uh, involving the restaurant. He is a customer of mine in, in Modesto and a other business of his, so I will abstain from voting on that one item. As will Janet. Oh, and I am um, I um, am the applicant of item 3.1 for the use permit, so I will abstain from anything. <laughs> All right. So uh, now we're opening up for public comments at this time, members of the public may comment on any item that is not on this evening's agenda with the subject matter uh, uh, jurisdiction of the Planning Commission Board. Um, individual comments will be limited to five minutes per person and each person may speak once during this time. Uh, the time cannot be yielded to another person under state law matters presented during the public comment period cannot be discussed or acted upon. Uh, it's for record purposes, state your name and city of residence and make your comments directly to the Planning Commission Board at the podium if anyone has any public comments. I live at 7730 McHenry Avenue, been there for 33 years. Um, I'm on the border, the western border of the proposed Riverwalk project. Um, the development of that would be a mistake for many reasons. I've spoken before and I don't want to repeat myself, but um, try to have some new reasons for opposing Riverwalk. Um, most of you probably have read about Riverwalk and know that it's parts of it are in a flood zone. It's prime farmland. Um, it is I think if it was developed, it would be <clears throat> become a bedroom community for people in Sacramento, the Bay Area, and so on. Um, it would have many impacts other than just removing prime farmland from production. Right now, that, that ground is planted in um, corn that's uh, going to be chopped up and fed to cattle. Um, it's been farmed for the last, I don't know how many years, ever since I've lived there, always been farmed. Uh, much of it is a groundwater, all of it's a groundwater recharge zone. Um, the impacts of water, extracting water out of the aquifer, 2 million gallons is uh, the proposed capacity for water holding for that area. Um, would that be used every day, every week? I don't know. It would be a big impact on the aquifer, plus removing that area from ground groundwater recharge. Uh, the impact on other ag operations surrounding this whole project would be immense. Um, I don't know if people would be able to continue their farming operations, the people that are all around the edge have grapes, peaches, almonds. Um, to develop this would be a perfect example of an environmental injustice. 
uh, the impact on the wildlife, the riparian uh, zone is, is just uh, unconscionable if, if it was to go to homes. Um, so when it comes time to vote on this project, uh, I urge you to review the environmental impact report, uh, which is supposed to be forthcoming. Um, we'll see how complete that is, but I urge you to vote no on it. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Dan Whetstone. I live at 7824 McHenry Avenue. Uh, my house uh, overlooks the river bottom where the river walk project is proposed. It's just such a beautiful piece of land down there. Um, and it, it, you know, it's several miles from the edge of Riverbank. Why, why are we gonna jump out there and start developing things? Like, you know, let's, let's uh, do it incrementally away from Riverbank, so. And again, there's the impact that uh, Barney talks about on traffic and and uh, again, all the wildlife we have out there. I can uh, just urge you to uh, reject this project. Thank you. I'm Libby Longstress. I live in Riverbank and I uh, want to speak out also against the river walk it would be a catastrophic change um, in that area the impact on social services on fire police traffic you're basically moving a whole city into what is currently an agricultural area without infrastructure around to support it it might not even be in the end, a very successful project. Uh, that area is prone to flooding and uh, some other problems. And I just really want to urge you to think carefully and to vote against this project when you have an opportunity. Hello, my name is Karen Conrado. I live on Hogue Road. Um, I want you to know that I'm opposed to the proposed housing development called River Walk. Um, <clears throat> and for the reasons that have already been itemized, um, prime agricultural land, the water resources are invaluable, and it would affect the aquifer. Um, there is a lack of infrastructure. There's wildlife and riparian habitat. Um, I think Libby already talked about the, the traffic and the, the, the policing and sheriff and fire and ambulance, all of those. Um, it's also, again, it's already been mentioned, but it's on, you would be building on a floodplain. And um, recent, um, a recent article I read has actually indicated an increased um, possibility for flooding. Um, <clears throat> and then another area that I'm concerned with would be eminent domain, that um, I feel that um, the roads that have been <laughs> proposed are not adequate, and um, I, I fear for what comes down the road. There are lots of reasons <clears throat> not to approve this project. And I hope you consider all of those reasons very carefully before you vote. And again, I would, of course, encourage you to vote no. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to the second item, the consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are to be acted upon by a single action a planning commission board unless otherwise required by an individual planning commission member or a member of the public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by motion of the planning commission board. Uh, so item 2.1 is posting of the agenda. The agenda for uh, today's meeting, June 21st, 2022, 
uh, was posted on the city community center bulletin board, the city hall north and south bulletin board, the post office, the city website, and it was emailed to the library on June 17th, 2022. Um, Item 2.2 is approval of um, this evening's June 21st, 2022 agenda. It provides an opportunity for the Planning Commission or staff to recommend that an item be placed on the agenda for discussion or to adjust the proposed agenda to allow an item to be taken out of order. We don't, aren't doing anything differently this evening. So item 2.3. That is the approval of the minutes from last month's April 19th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. Chair Lake, excuse me, I noticed yes. it on item 2.2. Oh, these are roll call. We blew right past the roll call. Yes, we did. <laughs> All right, so who's going to first and second? I make a motion we approve item 2.2. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> Okay, roll call vote. Um, Chair Link? Yes. Vice Chair Basso? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Okay, that's approved by vote. All right. So resuming item 2.3, um, last month's minutes, um, uh, correction was actually um, spotted and has been updated on uh, last month's item 3.1. Um, the vote was um, four to zero with one abstention, but it said it was a unanimous vote. So it, it, uh, that has been corrected. It is just four votes and one abstention is how uh, that now reads in the official document. All right, thank you. And um, so now, with that, we stand to approve um, what is submitted with that that um, adjustment. So, recommendation is uh, or we'll call vote on that. I make a motion to approve that last month. I second it. Okay, we'll call vote. Um, Chair Link? Uh, yes. Vice Chair Basso? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. And Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Okay, thank you. It passes by vote. All right. Item 2.4 is a resolution of appreciation for uh, Mallory Fenrich in recognition of her service to the City of Riverbank as a planning commissioner, com commissioner and, uh, and now our open seat that we have uh, available. But uh, Mallory, we have a, a plaque to present. I guess we vote on it first. Okay. We vote no, you don't get the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> but I make a motion that we do uh, recognize Mallory for her service. I second it. Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner or, or Chair Link? Oh, yes. <laughs> Vice, Vice Chair Vasso? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. And Commissioner Rubin? Okay. Write that in. 5-0. You get your plaque. <laughs> Did you bring a photographer? I didn't. My husband has COVID. Otherwise, I would have brought one. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Oh, wait. I'm just going to go over by the podium and I'll take your photo and send it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mallory. Thank you. 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 Bye, Mallory. Bye. All right. So now on to our uh, Planning Commission public hearing. Uh, the public notice uh, for items 3.1 and 3.2 that were published on June 8th in the Riverbank News. 
Um, item 3.1 is the conditional use permit um, for um, Janet and Janet Smallin and Randy Rocha, the daily dose on uh, 3310 Santa Fe Street across the street. The applicant re requests a CUP for a uh, type 41 on sale beer and wine eating establishment. And they, are, uh, they want to serve that at the Daily Dose Cafe. Uh, the property is located at 3310 Santa Fe. And the project will, ha will not have a significant effect on the environment as is categorically exempt under Article 19, Section 15332, infill development. I'm abstaining at this point. <laughs> I do have a question. Which side of the street is 3310? It's next to get to South side. I thought it was going to be across the street originally, but that changed. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, thank you. Okay, as mentioned, this is for the Daily Dose Cafe and it's a conditional use permit, 02-2022. Again, it's located at 3310 Santa Fe Street and they're requesting a license type 41 to serve beer and wine. Uh, they're newly remodeling the full service cafe and they intend to have a patio outside. Project location is that little red flag down there. Should have made it bigger. My apologies. It's across the street from the, um, the insurance place, and, and and by the red carpet and that vacant lot. It's a very long and narrow building. Here's the floor plan. It shows various seating areas as well as the food prep areas. According to the municipal code, um, in order to grant any use permit, the applicant must introduce evidence in support of their application sufficient to enable you to find that the establishment will not be detrimental to the health, safety, or general welfare of the city. So their evidence, number one, they intend to continue the remodel of a vacant storefront into a cafe and include outdoor patio seating. Two, the in owners are investing time and money into creating a friendly and positive dining experience for our Riverbank citizens. The owners wish to enhance this experience for their customers by adding beer and wine to their American cuisine menu. And one of the owners has existing restaurants with current ABC licenses, and so is experienced in training the servers uh, to uh, what ABC expects and the city. Uh, the recommendation is to determine that the applicant has submitted sufficient evidence for the Planning Commission to consider that it is categorically exempt under Article 19 and approve the conditional use permit pursuant to the findings and conditions contained in the resolution, uh, 2022-007. Uh, the applicant is here and available if you have additional questions on the project itself. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, and I'm here for questions as well. So we're looking at mornings from 7 to like 2, and then we'll probably close and reopen from 4 to 8 or 9. Um, not sure if the evenings will just be from Wednesday to Sunday and just have the mornings, you know, all week long. So trying to figure out the customer base. But originally it was going to be Cafe Bruin, but they've moved out of state, so we're kind of 
finishing up what they kind of started. Do you have an estimated opening date? I'm hoping by August. There's just a, everyone's so busy when you get to work that you they're three and four weeks out for installation of anything. So probably looks like more like the beginning of August. Well, we're probably going to have like maybe two to four people. So you know, in the mornings we'll probably just have one or two people there, and then in the evenings we'll have a little bit more. Okay, I move for approval of re resolution 2022. We have to do a public hearing. Sorry. We have to open for a public hearing. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So we are we are doing so. We're now opening up for any public comment or anyone online maybe that has a comment. In checking, in checking my emails, I do not see any comments. Okay. Then we uh, we can move forward with the recommendation that I can't participate in. Right, close the public hearing? Close the public <laughs> hearing. Okay. Now, move for approval resolution 2022-007 to approve the con conditional use permit for beer and wine sales. I will second. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call vote. Um, Chair Steve Link is uh, abstaining from this vote. Um, so, Vice Chair Basso? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. And Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Okay, it's approved four to one. Thank you. Not yet. Correction. Four to zero. Oh, four to zero. One abstain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so item number three is um, a conditional use permit. Um, 02 2022. Um, no, that is not it. 3.2 the architectural site and plan review 04 2021. Um, the Monshin Showroom. The project consists of an architectural and site plan review of a new showroom and office building approximately 12,000 square feet. Uh, the existing showroom on site will be demolished. The project is located, have we determined that it is indeed 6344 Roselle and um, Roselle Avenue. And this um, architecture and site plan review was analyzed pursuant to the California uh, CEQA Act and um, per section 15332, class 32, it is an infill development project and the project is categorically uh, exempt from CEQA. And in this case, we open this up for public comment. Steph. Or staff A comment. Staff report first. So we can see it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll let them comment on it. All right. Okay. Okay, um, as mentioned, this is the Mancha and Industries Architectural and Site Plan Review 04 2021. Okay, no worries. Okay. I'll just work around you. So, uh, Mancha and Industries has submitted an application for architecture and site plan review um, in the municipal code. Um, all commercial and industrial projects and um, multifamily projects are required to have architecture and site plan review. They propose to demolish the existing showroom that you see from Patterson Road. And that site where this showroom will be demolished, uh, it will be parking. Then to the west of the existing showroom where there is existing parking now, that's where the new building will be constructed. Not advancing, so I'll just keep going. So let's see, so the general plan designation is industrial business park. Oh, there we go, that shows the location. Okay. 
<laughs> right where it is. Okay, as, as mentioned, this is a general plan designation. Uh, you can see there's some residential across the street, some uh, the cannery district is across the street to the north, and then across the railroad tracks is um, additional industrial. So the project is um, consistent with the, with the general plan, um, not only as the use itself, but the use of traffic control devices and pedestrian safety um, in their parking lot. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. They do use um, you know, stop signs and um, uh, wayfinding signage. Policy design 8.3, uh, they intend to use higher quality building materials and aesthetics. The newer building should uh, fit in with what's existing on site already. And policy design 10.1, uh, safe access to sidewalks and streets. Uh, city staff, particularly uh, the public works inspector and the city engineer have been working with the Monsignes to ensure that there is appropriate ADA access both to the building and to the street and from the street. The zoning designation is M1 Light Industrial. You can see that is the same uh, for the cannery across the street, the cannery location and across the railroad tracks. We do have some multifamily housing zoning as well as some single family zoning and some commercial uh, to the west of the site. Some of the architectural features of the new building, it is made of prefabricated steel, uh, the, the roof as well as the uh, wall. It'll have some brick wainscoting for the uh, facade. Uh, there are numerous office windows, which is unusual in um, industrial buildings. Uh, the building will be beige to match the existing buildings, and there will be some upgraded landscaping. The um, applicant has agreed to some uh, landscape boxes to kind of soften up the facade of the building. Oh, it seems to be stuck again. I'm sorry, Norma. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this next slide is the elevations of the building, um, and then the floor plan is right. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll go ahead and talk about the floor plan until we can get it up there. The showroom portion of the building will be in the center of the building. The break room, restrooms, and the 25 offices will be around the perimeter, hence the additional windows. The, um, the offices will, um, will have numerous windows uh, for the employees. There will not be an increase in employees. My understanding is the uh, sales folks are now scattered throughout the site, and this will actually bring them together in one building. Oh, there we go. Back. Yay. Okay. Back to the elevations. Thank you, Norma. So as you can see, the numerous windows around the building, um, the uh, two sets of the two elevations on the left side of the screen would be the public entrance and the employee entrance. And then on the bottom right, you will see another door and that's um, an exit from the break room. But the rest of those windows are all offices for the sales folks. Here's the floor plan showing the, uh, the showroom in the center like I mentioned. Here's uh, the site plan where the uh, new building will be located. Uh, there's existing parking, um, some paved parking to the um, on the left side of that building there. Um, they hope to put in um, kind of a canopy between the new building and the existing factory building right there. Uh, there will be existing or there will be additional parking. Um, you can see uh, besides the parking spaces on there, the valley gutters and such that the city engineer has required for pop proper drainage. The safe path of travel that's shown on this photo 
actually goes back to the um, existing uh, trash enclosure, which is um, closer to the south end of the building, or not, of the site, excuse me, not the building, but the site. Um, so the municipal code requires that uh, trash enclosures and recycling need to be, relo be located uh, close enough for the um, employees to use it. Uh, so therefore, staff has required that a uh, trash enclosure be uh, constructed close to the new building. The um, existing that's closer to the south end of the property are the larger roll-off type of containers for wood scraps and, and paper and uh, that type of recycling. Oh, it froze again. <coughs> Okay, well, this one doesn't have a picture. So um, this uh, slide is about the environmental. And because um, the project um, is an infill development project, it's surrounded by developed properties. And it's currently being used as a gravel parking lot. Uh, therefore, it can be seen that there are not any environmental um, resources in this parking lot that would uh, require further um, study and consideration. Um, so we uh, selected the infill development projects uh, for a notice of exemption. If this project is approved, um, the notice exemption will be uh, submitted to the county and posted. Uh, public notices, the uh, public notice was published in the Riverbank News on June 8th. And public notices were mailed to surrounding property owners and businesses on June 7th. And it is recommended that you approve resolution 2022-008 and approve the architecture and site plan review for Monsheen Industries. And the applicant is here if you have additional questions and I am available as well. Thank you. Was there any response to what was sent out to the public, the neighboring area? Was anyone replied? No, I had, I think, two come back as undeliverable. I'm guessing the people moved. And um, I have not received any emails or phone calls about the project. Um, yeah, so I didn't know if um, Ms. Monty, um wanted to, to say anything. Uh, but I know we do have a public comment period here as well. Sure. But they would go before the public comment, correct? Yeah. Or, or part. I just don't see much line. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to five minutes. As, uh, if, if you have something you'd like know. to share. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have any members of the public wishing to comment? All right. <laughs> are we butchering your last name as well? May to help us with that? was hitting me because there was a nap. No. Michael Monshine. I just wanted to say thank you. My wife is doing an outstanding job over there. She got to retire eight years ago. And doesn't Almost years. 10 years ago <laughs> because you can't have two chiefs. And my dad started in 64. My parents bought the property there in uh, 75 and 76 77 we started to build the building our original 18,500 and we just kept growing to what we are now and my father and I bought the other piece to the to the uh, south of us and that's just parking lot as well that was going to be a e ingress egress and in and out, egress, ingress, uh, for an industrial park of what I wanted to do, where the showroom is and, and what have you. But um, what she's doing, I just congratulate her and the city of Riverbank. It's been a great city, great move for us when we moved here. And in 91, he made me a 50% partner because he said I finally worked, and then, <laughs> and then when the wife came, she 
fired me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for everything. And like I say, I'm very proud of her. And the city of Riverbank, one of the things we do need is industry. When all the housing came in on Roselle Avenue, I went ahead and I fought against it because the city needs industry. We lost our fire department, we lost our, sh our police department, but Consolidated is doing great. The sheriff's department is doing great and it was a good move. But uh, industry is the backbone to everything. And why would I be against housing? You know, that's our livelihood. But, <laughs> but you do need industry to make a community grow. The, the river walk, it's a great thing, but you do need industry and light, heavy, and so forth, and not send it away, you know. But like I say, we're very proud, very happy to be part of this city, and we have contributed quite a bit and helped the city with um, on the corner where the new signal light. My father and I gave up property, so you could put that signal in. We helped with the skateboard park. We helped with... Uh, the soldier in front of uh, uh, the community center. And there's quite a few things. We helped put in uh, a sewer line. And so it's just working together. And that's what I appreciate. And I thank all of you for whatever you're going to be doing. And with Karen's project. Now she's going to say, oh, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So with that, we will close public comment, and uh, and I, I will go ahead and make a motion to uh, approve item three point two. Karen's uh, architectural and uh, site plan review. Um, item zero uh, four dash. Two, two zero two one. I will second that. Roll call vote. Um, Vice Chair Link. I mean Chair Link. Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> Vice Chair Vasso. Yes. Commissioner Dyson. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. And Commissioner Rubin. Yes. Okay. It passes five zero. Now, uh, item number four are just uh, planning commission comments. I have a comment, Chair Link. I just wanted to let everyone know, my fellow commissioners and staff and the audience, I've had the honor of being elected to the California Senior Legislature. Thank you. I have a training session at the end of this month, so I'll know more about what that means, and I'll be uh, sworn in October 1st. So I'm you know, proud of that. You are all too young to be involved with the seniors, but I will. <laughs> what officially is senior age now? Is it 60? Yes, 60. Almost there. All right. I guess we asked this of staff if there is any uh, county referral correspondence information this evening. I have none, thank you. All right. And uh, item six, are any staff comments in general? I would like to make two quick comments. Uh, one is an update on the Pocket Senior Project. Uh, it was before you in April, and you voted to um, ask the city council to not, rec to not approve it. So that was your recommendation to not approve it. I had it uh, ready to go public notice for uh, next Tuesday with the city council because your recommendations do move forward. 
um, and I was taking the recommendation as well as the neighborhood petition. And one word in the public notice tripped me up. So um, we have to re-notice it. And so it will be going to the city council meeting of July 26th, fortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's when it'll be there in case anybody's watching and, and wants to attend that meeting. And then the other thing is that there is the no dance and car show this weekend on Saturday and uh, a picnic lunch, free food for anybody who shows up for as long as it lasts. Um, I will be serving, so I'll give you some extra large servings <laughs> if you come by and say hi. And that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, uh, the food, I think, is from 11 to 1. Until supplies last. Until supplies last. 11 to question mark. That's been relocated, Donna, to the park across the street? Yeah, it's going to be down here. It was going to be at the community center, but then a public works project jumped ahead, and they're going to be tearing up the street in front of the uh, community center, so they moved it downtown here, which I think is a good thing because there's a lot more shade, these nice trees. When you say tearing up the street, do you mean dancing? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be down here. <laughs> Uh, no, resurfacing it. Um, they just need to get the project done uh, while school's out, since it's right in front of the um, Cardoza School. Right. Item seven is the adjournment with the, uh, the next regular planning commission meeting uh, to be scheduled for July 19th, uh, 2022 at 6 p.m. at the same location. We are adjourned. Thank you.